What turbo manifold should I buy? This is another hugely debated uh, conundrum that people run into. And honestly, this ranges from what your abilities, time, money, th there's a lot of things that go into this, uh, but essentially a turbo manifold is just plumbing to move the exhaust from the motor to the turbo. I know it gets overcomplicated sometimes and people want to look into like the craziest FEA analysis of the flow and all the bends and things and people can't, they can't get around that. However, when you're making a lower amount of horsepower, that stuff doesn't matter as much. If you're gonna make 350 horsepower, this homemade adapter that I made actually works really well. And it works to this day and has zero issues. It's made of mild steel and it doesn't crack. Uh, you might look at that and think that is ugly and that will never work, but that is wrong. It actually does work. It just wouldn't work in an extreme application where you're trying to get every ounce out of the motor. So if you're not pushing something ex to an extreme, you can do stuff that's basic. And just because it's homemade doesn't mean that it's that it's bad. You can make a really high flowing, capable manifold out of mild steel and a MIG welder. It just depends on how much effort you're gonna put into that. So don't be afraid if you have the fab fabrication uh, capabilities to mess with making an adapter that goes from like your stock manifolds and up. If you don't believe me that this works, look up Richard Holdner and his videos that he does engine dynos on. He makes catastrophes out of waste pipes that just go from stock manifolds on old motors into a giant turbo and makes plenty of horsepower. Uh, I'm not lying to you, it's just how it is. Um, if you're not trying to get every ounce out of something and go into like a pro mod or something crazy, uh, you can do a lot of stuff uh, in your backyard. Um, but also, it also is really nice to purchase something that just works. And there's a lot of options out there. Uh, actually, not really, but there are options. <laughs> like the, uh, the, the one that seems to be like a really good deal and um, really well made is the Pure Performance Factory Sweden. These are M20 manifolds that you can have made. They are mild steel. They also make them in stainless steel, but you get a tubular manifold with your choice of, of, um, of flange for what your turbo is going to fit. And then one that's gotten really popular recently because there's really no one else that has done this recently is the M20 twin scroll manifold from E28 goodies that just bolts up. I have a video on it. I purchased it. The fitment is perfect and it's a very good way to go for an inexpensive um, an inexpensive but quality manifold. They are twin divided. They have really good flow priorities on every one of these cylinders for those people that can't get over the flow stuff. Um, it even has a divided wastegate. So you can go look that up. I even have a video on it if you wanna see some really good 4K footage of it being unboxed. Um, but yeah, there's a few different things. CX Racing. They have some cheap ones that are these uh, kind of Chinese really cheap ones, but I've actually talked to a few guys uh, that run those and it, you have to modify them to like make them better. They have some cheap thin metals that they're made out of and uh, yeah, you, you have to modify them to get the most out of them, but they do work. Um, usually the cheaper something is, the more you're gonna have to mess with it. You might have to flatten the surface or cut out some of the holes where the flange goes or reinforce it because it can't handle the weight of the turbo. There's a lot of things that go into cheap stuff. Uh, I would say in manifolds, unless you are building it yourself, you probably will get more out of something that is well built. And uh, it is one of those areas where you may get what you pay for. So look into that but also don't be afraid of making one yourself. And uh, I've had good success making manifold adapters over the years, as well as I've seen quite a few um, really successful manifold adapter builds. What wastegate should I buy? This is highly debated as well, but there is information from companies like TurboSmart that you can just go watch their video and find out what they suggest. Um, <clears throat> Typically, the bigger the engine and the more RPM, the more wastegate you need. Also, if you're trying to run lower boost, and especially on a bigger motor, you need more wastegate. So 
all the wastegate's job to do is to let exhaust go around the turbo and just go out the exhaust instead of going through the turbo. And so if you're trying to not make boost and you don't want a lot to go through the turbo, you need a significant amount to bypass the turbo through the wastegate and therefore the wastegate needs to flow enough to give you that result. So typically you can just go with like a 45 or 50 millimeter wastegate, especially if you have good wastegate priority, which is the angle of the wastegate in relationship to the flow of the exhaust going into the turbo. It should be on a 45 degree to, to maximize that. If you look on, I think it was Turbo Smart's page that I was looking at, they have uh, some data where they said the flow can be reduced through the wastegate by 50% if you put it on a 90 degree versus a 45 degree angle to the flow. So you'll lose a lot of the capability of the wastegate if it's not mounted correctly. So one of the biggest parts of just wastegates you'll see with like boost creep is the wastegate is not in a correct spot. They're not in a good place. It might be the right size wastegate, but it's not. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can look at. I've had success with some cheap wastegates like the Chinese ones and also on the right um, with like a really quality turbo smart one. I personally think that the wastegate is something that if, you, if, if all the things you buy are cheap, you should put your money into a wastegate because the wastegate is controlling the boost. It's the lifeblood of what keeps your motor alive in a lot of ways. If you make too much boost and you don't have a safety setup and it was your wastegate's fault, it might blow your motor. So having a quality component that that controls your boost and having good connections uh, to control it on your the airline side is going to be crucial. So um, typically for just anyone who's building one of these classic BMWs like this, if it's, if it's in a good spot, one 45 or 50 millimeter wastegate is going to be fine. I have even used, uh, like on this bottom picture here, I've used a single 38 and a 40 millimeter and had good luck, but um, you'll definitely get a little better results if you go just a touch bigger, especially if you want to make low boost and have like more boost control. Uh, getting a little bit bigger wastegate will not hurt. So wastegate is, placement is crucial and try to buy quality like turbo smart tile um, something that you know there's a ton of them out there now there's jgs and and precision turbo and garrett's even making them now and they're all you know 350 to 500 dollars depending on what you buy so just plan for that in your build buy a quality wastegate and you won't be sad is really the moral of the story and you you definitely get what you pay for with these the chinese ones typically you have to open them up make sure the the valve isn't stuck, maybe lubricate them and put in a better diaphragm or fix the diaphragm. I've had one where the diaphragm was like folded over and pinched just as it was. I'm glad I took it apart, but you have to, they're more finicky. The more, seems like with these parts, the, the less money you put into them, the more time you put into repairing them or making them work in my opinion. So that's one thing to look at.